Hi everybody, Joe's Goat here, and this is how I paint org skin. Um, now this is not the quickest technique in the world, and uh, it's probably not advisable for huge amounts of orcs, but certainly if you want to uh, do something uh, you know, a little bit more special for the uh, you know a, a boss or something like that, then maybe uh, maybe this will help you. Um, this is also pretty much how I paint anyway, so it should be of some interest in that manner. So this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to use two brushes, uh, a zero and a double zero. Uh, plenty of water. I use a uh, syringe for my water, uh, just to give me a rough idea of uh, how much I'm mixing. Um, and then. Uh, these are the, the the paints that I'm using. Um, these are all from the Vallejo Panzer Aces. And the only reason I'm using those over any other is because that's what's on my local store. So there's a base coat of Splinter Stripes strips, um, which is a nice nice green. I think for all it's yeah, it's it's nice and green, but not uh, too green. We've got uh, red tail light for the shadows, so that's just a really dark red. And then the highlights uh, are done uh, with light mud, uh, which is just a, a beige colour. So that's what I'm going to use on the video. But you can just, uh, you know, you could easily swap those out for um, Games Workshop paints or Vallejo game colour. Uh, I did do a test using um, game colours um, extra opaque paints. Um, so it was heavy green, heavy red, and um, yeah, what's the other one? It's the equivalent of denim stone, heavy warm grey. Um, so yeah, I mean they work perfectly fine uh, for this. Um, they're a little harder to work with because uh, of the, the higher amounts of pigment in them. Um, but uh, you know, it's fine. You can work with those. So, but the point is, you can use any paints really with this, um, and it should be fine. So let's get on with how I paint orcs. Okay, here we go. I'm working with a, a white base coat. Um, I always tend to prime in white or grey. Um, and uh, I'm just not a fan of painting over black. Um, also, I, I want to choose the colour of my shadows. And if you're painting with black, then your shadows are pretty much black. Um, so, if I... Uh, you know, start with a uh, white primer then uh, I get to choose the colour for the shadows. So just taking the uh, the base colour which in this case is uh, Pans Race's uh, splinter strips and just uh, thin that down you know, one to one and uh, just apply a couple of coats of that to, the, to all the skin areas. You can see that's that's quite a nice nice green there for an orc I think. So I'll probably just skip ahead now as uh, we all know how to base coat. Like I say there's a couple of layers going to go on here. Okay and now for the uh, shadows. Uh, I'm going to be using a mixture of the tail light red and uh, the splinter strips, which is the uh, the base coat green. So I've just mixed that one to one, and um, it's very dilute. Uh, I've put a, quite a bit of water in there, so I've so got uh, four or five drops probably uh, of water in there. So it's nice and thin. You can barely see it on the on the surface there, but it gets into the recesses. So it's a bit like a wash, quite thin. So you can see there, I, I just applied it to the uh, the recessed areas on the muscle and the underside of the arm, where uh, I want that to be 
shadowed. Now I'll do this in a couple of coats. So uh, there's probably two or three coats on. So I'll start on one arm, move around the face to the other arm, and then by the time we've got to the end of that arm, the first arm will have dried again, and then just go over it again until I've got a nice colour. The deep red going over the green will give a nice uh, reddy brown in the in the shadows. Um, should just add a little bit more interest to it than a, than a deep green or a black. Okay, now I'm just going to go over the, the raised areas with the original base coat. This will just help it blend in with the uh, the, sh uh, the shadows. Um, as you can see there, I'm, I'm pushing the, uh, the brush to, to where I want the pigment to go. So I want the the uh, the lightest part, for example, on the the brow of the head, and the the bulk of the light will be on the back of the head. So that's where I want all the pigment to to end up. So I'm pushing back, and uh, that should help uh, blend in uh, a bit more. Okay, now for the first proper highlight, which is just a one-to-one -one mix of the um, base colour, the splinter strips, and the light mud, the uh, beige colour. So this gives us a nice lighter green, and uh, I'll just apply that to the tops of the muscles. Um, so now we're aiming for the you know, look down on the mini and you know see where the light would be hitting uh, dragging the brush to the to the top of the muscle because that's where the, the lightest area will, will be and so that's where I want most of the pigment to settle same for on the top of the head here start at the front and move to the back and then we just do the same all over the all over the mini just getting those top surfaces, lightening them up. Now I like to use a, a beige to to lighten the uh, the green for the highlight. Um, I think it gives a more subtle transition than using a white, which can get quite harsh, and um, you can also end up with quite a minty looking green, which uh, I'm not. I just don't think it would work as well. So I, I like to use the beige. It keeps the, those muddy colours in there as well. Um, so just getting those top edges wherever we think the light's going to be hitting. Okay, and so now we'll do the final highlight, which is just the uh, light mud. So we just want to use that to hit the uh, very top areas, anywhere with a, an edge. So you've got these very prominent uh, brown ridges on the orcs, tips of the ears, all that sort of thing. We'll pick up the cheekbones. Um, and... Uh, for me, one of the, the, the key areas with the uh, with the orcs and the, the lightest highlight. Um, I'll sometimes even use an even lighter highlight for the for the uh, the mouth, um, just to to bring that bring that out a little bit more. So we'll just build that up, lots and lots of thin layers. Just uh, apply a single stroke. And just you know, pull the pigment to the to the to the edge where you want the colour to be, um, and just just build that up. Um, I tend to use the lighter colour for the fingers as well. Um, certainly on the, on the bigger pieces, not so much on the boys generally, but 
just using that for this. Um, also, you want to get these uh, just the, the very tops of these muscles now, just to, to lighten those. And then um, we'll also do here. You'll see just a line where the the, uh, the crease in the muscle is, and just just put it a very fine line on the top edge next to the shadow and just build that up slowly and uh, that will really make the muscle pop so just keep pushing the pigment to, to where you want it to be wherever your brush leaves the model that's where the, the bulk of the pigment is going to to be left so it's mainly just edges now and just the the ends um, where you want the lightest colour to be. We'll apply a couple of coats to this to each of these parts but it's just the same technique just keep doing it until you get to the to the level you want. And so here's the uh, the finished orc. You can see the red shadows look really nice and uh, blended in quite well. And the you just see the little line on the top of the muscles and the uh, the darker uh, shadow underneath the arm, just to create that you know effect of light from above. And uh, I think it works pretty well. I think it looks quite mean. So once you've done that, it's all just the usual stuff, teeth and red eyes and everything like that. But yeah, this is the bulk of an orc and this is how I do them. Thanks for watching guys.